So what is it about the connection between the right and left hemisphere of the brain that allows us to hold in each place a wealth of ability that is uh, on one hand logical and on one hand intuitive? Exactly what you said. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> what it is but it but it but at least that's how we've learned it right we've learned that one side of the brain focuses on on one area of our lives and the other side focuses on the other i think in real life you know again we can't look inside our brains and see what's happening but we can feel a difference i i can feel when i wake up and i'm in that that very analytical logical place and that feels good sometimes but then sometimes it's just sort of like we need to shake it up Right, we talk about moving our body and how that changes our emotions, right? Just, just to move your body. If you're stuck in an emotion, one of the best things that you can do is to actually move. Um, I, I was actually on a palm squad when I, was in, when I was in high school. We had to do high kicks. And I remember my kicks weren't so high. I was kind of new on the squad and they were like, no, you gotta work on your kicks. And my kicks, my kicks were kind of low. And I remember the teacher was like, look up. She was like, look up. And she said, the body follows the head. And I was like, oh, and just that made my kicks much higher, much, much higher. And it wasn't that I was much more flexible. It was that my body was following my head. And, and so after that, I always looked up. I looked at the, the highest place in the bleachers, or I looked at the clouds when I kicked, and my kicks were much better. If anyone is ever trying to work on your kicks, um, just look up. <laughs> it, it makes works. a lot of sense. To where anxieties are concerned, right? Yeah. So often days I'll wake up just feeling anxious. There's no good reason for it. It just tends to be how I'm wired. Yes. And I I have the awareness now as an adult to go, okay, um, there's a part of my brain that's overactive. Mm -hmm. It's less about trying to diminish what is natural around my anxiety and more about finding a remedy for it to naturally diminish what I no longer want. So first thing often I do, I've said this before, is I move my body. I get in it and yes. I move it. Just because you wake up doesn't mean you're fully embodied, right? Yes. <laughs> so I, I move my body and then I go into my meditation room. Sometimes I meditate first, meditate, pray, journal. Um, so that I have some other foundation for myself moving forward in my day than the abiding anxiety that tends to be there in the background. And I have found mm -hmm. that I've been able to rewire that part of my brain with these other practices and habits that I now look forward to. Right, and that's called neuroplasticity. Yeah, thoughts that fire together, wire together. Wire right? that's together. That's the way that he describes it. So the more that you think about things, then, then you start, you almost like make a path in your brain, almost like you know, the path in your backyard that you walk over and over and you, and you start to make a path. So the more that you do that, um, it's amazing. Or the way that our brains are wired, things actually do wire together. So I'm so glad. And again, that's all, that goes all with mindfulness and it goes, with, it goes along with a lot of what I believe in and what I find to be so helpful for people is to, um, to thank you so much, Daniel Siegel. Thank you, Tatiana. I appreciate <laughs> oh, Daniel that. Siegel, I knew course, my friends yes. would come through for me. <laughs> Yes. Um, yes, Daniel Siegel, he's, he's amazing and has a lot of really great information about yeah. that. But yeah, it's, I Good. mean, anxiety, I, I'm, I like to be friends with anxiety, right? Like anxiety, we can actually be friends with. And I think if we can change the way that, that we experience anxiety and the way that we label it and the way that we think of it as like bad anxiety, it's like, no, it's like, oh yeah, one more of my feelings. Come here, anxiety, have a seat. Tell me what it is that you need to tell me. I'm so glad you're here. I know you're here because you love me so much and you're always looking out for me and you just really want what's best for me. So spend some time, you know, take as much time as you need. And then when it feels nourished and taken care of, anxiety leaves on its own accord and it's all fine. It's all natural. It's fine. Can all the, can all the therapists in the circle nod their head yes? 